welcome back to another video. Stephen and I are just feeding the pigs this evening. It has been relentless rain again since the storms at the weekend. It's rained non-stop all day today, which is great in a way for getting the ground here where the pigs are, making sure that it's um, soft enough for them to be able to turn over. But Stephen's actually just seen um, something that we didn't know was there. There's a drain in the field. It's not a modern drain, um, mo not a modern field drainage system. Um, we're just a little bit concerned as to where it's coming from. He thinks it might be broken um, and actually not uh, in use or anything at the moment, but we certainly didn't. Seven years of living here and we didn't know it was there. So the pigs, hit, the whole point of the pigs being in here is to turn this area over. It's just full of weeds. Um, it grows docks, nettles, all sorts. It's no good for the horses grazing. Um, and we thought if we can get all of this turned over, then we can probably reseed it with a decent grass and next year just leave it fallow, let the, let the grass grow through and the year after just lightly graze it. Um, but the pigs are doing a great job. Just have a look at this. That explains why it's always damp. How long is it? Is it just... It's all. Watch yourself. It's all. It's halfway clogged up. But these are bits of it here, look. You've seen that massive one behind your feet? Yeah. And there, stepping, yeah. This was all exactly the same as this when the pigs first came in. Um, I can't remember exactly how long they've been in, but it's not that long. Can, can you remember? Maybe six weeks. Something. something like that, isn't it? Certainly not longer. So the drain that Stephen's talking about is just there and all of this, we believe this is probably just waterlogged because of the turning over that the pigs have done. But there's some absolutely huge stones that Stephen's taken out next to the pig over there that um, is one of the points of them turning it over as well. We've just brought them out some uh, produce from the garden just to supplement the compound feed that they're having and essentially just having a check on them. And uh, Stephen has just brought some bags of straw down, put them in these feed bags and he's just filled up their bed there because um, it's been that wet. They tend to chew the straw um, so they didn't have that much bedding in there. So that's all nice and comfortable for them tonight. And it's just started raining again. Look at that. Rodney, you'll get bit. We're just coming into the paddock to check on the chickens that are in there after the downpours that we've had as well and Stephen's just moving their feeder inside because um, it's essentially it's been soaked through so he's just put it inside so that they can get to it um, in the morning because most of them are going to bed for the night now we'll just check if there's any more eggs that, that have been collected today this morning and we're just talking about where we're going to put our meat birds so we haven't had any meat birds yet this year um, purposefully just with going away from the small holding we don't want to put that responsibility on anybody else but we're going to be getting maybe 20 or 40 maybe either one batch or over two batches we're not too sure yet but we're just talking about where we're going to put them because obviously we want them to free range now the worry here if they come outside too early is that any predators i'm not talking about foxes i'm talking about rodents rats and things like that tend to prey on them if they come out too small and also if they come out with all of the other chickens that we've got here then they won't stand a chance because they'll just get bullied so what we think we're going to do is Stephen's going to concoct something in in the barn in one of the stables because there's none of the stables that are in use at the moment um, and make it rat proof. Now I hesitate when I'm saying that because we've, we know if you've watched any of, any of our videos previously with the quail and things like that nothing seems to be rat proof but he'll try his hardest to get it as safe as possible and we'll raise them in the barn in the safety of the stable and a pen within the stable for the first two, three, four weeks until they're big enough to come outside and fend for themselves amongst all of these guys here. Yeah, 
other place that we could put them is out here with the ducks, but as you can see from the, from the eggs that have been eaten, the rats come out here and eat those eggs during the day as well. So if, all, if any eggs are laying, uh, laid after we've collected them on a morning, then they can potentially be eaten by the rats during the day. They don't bother with the animals. Um, certainly at that size, it's just with the eggs and things, but obviously if there were any chicks out there that were quite small, they would be vulnerable to that as well. Well, we're back in the house while Stephen takes care of some things for the ducks out there. He's given them a good clean out and getting a few things sorted outside, but I've had to rush in because I've got a ton of currants to be taken care of. We have got absolutely loads that the bushes this year are overloaded with them, which is a fantastic problem to have, but I need to get to them quite quickly because I don't want them turning to mush. Now I can freeze quite a few, um, but I want to get, there's a pan here that's got about just over four pound of black currants in. I want to make black currant jelly or syrup, depending if it sets or not, and um, because we really, really enjoyed that last winter into this year. And we've still got a few left on the shelf, but I think it's mostly apple syrup that we've got left. This was delicious. I am going to make blackcurrant jam as well, but I'm going to freeze those first because it's easy to get all the stalks off when they're frozen. You can just rub them in your hands and all the stalks fall off. Then you can make the jams from the frozen berries. Um, but we're going to get, there is, as I say, four pounds, just over about four and a half pounds in there. I'm going to cover them with water and simmer them for an hour so that I can leave them to drip overnight. And then I'll make the jelly tomorrow early in the morning from the residual juice that's dripped through. Now I've just got about three pints of water in here. We'll see how much this takes. I'm a little bit behind with not being too well after we came back, back off holiday. I'm still not 100%, but I need to get stuff done. So I'm just wanting to, to get this started at least. Now, the more water you put in, the more residual juice you will have in the morning. But there's about two and a half, three pints there. A little bit more for good luck. And I'm just, this is just a really old, heavy bottomed, um, it's a cast iron Dutch oven. Um, so I'm just going to put this on a simmer. I will put the lid on. And I'm just going to put this on a really low simmer and leave this for about an hour. And while this is simmering, I've got another little recipe I want to get started. When you're simmering these black currants, you don't need to worry about the stalks or anything because they're going to go through the muslin cloth. So just don't feel like you have to pick all of those berries off the stalks. So that's now going to come to a simmer and I'll leave it for an hour. So I'll set the timer for an hour once it starts simmering and it'll become really soft and juicy and make the extraction of that juice through the muslin cloth really, really easy. I'll just leave it overnight. It's going to be too late otherwise for me. Now, this next recipe that I'm going to do is basically a fermented cordial. People shy away when they hear the word fermented because I think they think it's something that's gone off. Well, that's de definitely not the case. From what I understand, fermenting your foods is a lot better for you from a gut health perspective. So I'm going to make this and we're going to use this as a cordial for the adults and for the kids. It's going to sit, it's got equal amounts of black currants and raw honey and it's going to sit on the counter for up to two weeks. Then you're going to strain it and just use it as you would any other cordial. So these black currants have been washed. I'm going to pick over them, pick out any of the bigger stalks. There shouldn't be any leaves or anything in there now, but I'm quite happy for these to go in the jar. Whether it'll be one or two jars, we shall see. It's just over a jar of our raw honey that I've got just here um, that I'm going to be using. So this is about a 400 gram jar. So I'll need just a little bit more and I'll see if I need the one or two jars and then we'll just pop those on the countertop. And then later on that evening, when the black currants were nice and soft, I waited for them to cool ever so slightly. And I just passed them through this jelly cloth, which sat inside a colander that was resting on a larger saucepan and just left those to drip overnight. So it's actually the next night, not the next morning. I'm still not 100% with this flipping cold. Um, I feel it tons better, but it's just my throat and things now. So mornings aren't my best, best time of day at the moment. Um, I work today. So I'm just getting back to this tonight. I need to get outside and get the garlic harvested. It was due to be dry all day today. And I thought this is gonna be the only opportunity I get to harvest the garlic because we're in for a lot of rain over the next few days. Um, and I just wanted to get it out and make sure that it could at least get started to just dry out essentially. Um, I'm multitasking while I'm talking to you. I probably shouldn't. I'm gonna weigh out some sugar because I'm gonna get on with this jelly. Then I'm gonna go outside and get that garlic harvested. 
if the weather allows. Stephen's already out there with Grace, they're doing a few things. Now, the way that I make jelly, we have got the strained juice. So this strained, the juice strained into this pan overnight. I have got about four pints of juice. And what I'm gonna do, I've got my red Dutch oven, which is here, I couldn't remember where I put it. And I'm gonna do one pint of juice to one pound of sugar. That's the way I do all of my jellies. Some people say that's a lot of sugar. You can do less if you want, but it might not stay um, shelf stable for a long time. If you're gonna use it really quickly, just do it to taste, use a lot less. But I'm looking to get the winter pantry stocked up. And if it's got equal amounts of juice to sugar and it's in sterilized jars, which are in the instant pot, going in the instant pot at the moment, it'll last as long as I need it anyway. I'm not gonna put a time frame on it. So I'm just gonna wear out a pound of sugar and I'm gonna warm the juice up first. When it's warm, I'll add the sugar and then we'll bring it to almost a boil. For jelly, you wanna get it to setting point, which is 104 degrees C. You just wanna make a syrup. It doesn't need to get to setting point. It just needs to be at a boil, ready to put into the hot sterilized jars. We've got a friend in the kitchen. It's actually quite a lot of flies at the moment. I don't know what's going on, but it's uh, fly season already. Right, let's wear this sugar out. Go. I get my pint measuring jug just to be able to make sure that I don't pour too much out of the um, of the big jug because the big jug holds four or five pints. Um, but the instant pot's going at the moment. Excuse the state of the kitchen, by the way. We've just eaten our meal. The instant pot is going on a low pressure for ten minutes to sterilise the jars. I've got four um, of my honey sized jars, so these jars have been come to us with honey in them, raw honey that we buy from a local producer, and I'm going to reuse them. Um, not everybody, uh, including the lids rather, not everybody reuses the lids. I've done it with these before and it's worked out just fine. If you don't want to, then make sure you get fresh new lids each time, but I'm okay with this. They are screw top um, bands and the jars hold about 400 grams of honey. I don't know if that means it's a 400 ml jar, but anyway. Now I can't remember if this um, pot will do two pints of liquid and two pounds of sugar at a time. That doesn't look like there's hardly anything in, but trust me, once the juice and the um, sugar combine and starts bubbling up, it gets quite frightening when it gets to the top of the pot. And uh, you think, oh my goodness, there's nowhere left for it to go. So we're just gonna try one pint and one pound of sugar to start off with. If I think I'll be able to fit two pints in on the next go around, I'll do two pints and two pounds of sugar, but I'm not in a rush. So happy to do one pint at a time. So the plan is, I've um, just got four jars. So this Instant Pot here is the Pro Pro, Pro, Pro Plus. Um, it's the new one that's just become available in the UK. I'm gonna do a future video on it. And it's the only one with the canning option that's available to us here in the UK. But like I say, I'll do a separate video on that for those that are interested. If not, if you're interested in sterilizing your jars, you can do it in any Instant Pot um, for 10 minutes on low pressure and we'll be sterilized. That's just venting, it's on quick release. So you don't need to do anything for that. And then this is just starting to warm up. So once it's warm, you can see the steam starting to rise. I'm going to add the sugar. Now, I think I might have said I was making jelly with this first one. I'm not. I'm just going to make the syrup. So literally, we'll just get this dissolved and bring it to a boil. But I won't get it up to a setting point. I'll just get it served straight into, potted up straight into the hot jars. And then those will be ready for the shells once they've cooled down. That first batch has filled up two of these jars completely and there was a tiny bit left so I've just left it in the bottom of the pan. I've added another pint and I'll do another pound of sugar now and then anything that's left I'll just leave out for breakfast or for, for this weekend. So that'll be four jars complete but I'm going to need to sterilise some more jars. That literally doesn't take very long at all. I'm so pleased. I'm going to get the rest of this finished and then I feel like I'm starting to slowly catch up with things. I've got the white currants and the red currants to get done. I'll get those dripping overnight. I'll do the same again tomorrow after work and we might actually get caught up with ourselves or I might because it feels as though I'm chasing my tail at the moment. So I'm going to get this finished and then we'll end harvesting the garlic outside as long as the rain stays away. I tie my hair up and we're battling between rainstorms. You wouldn't think so looking at the weather now, but it's been raining super heavily again. So we're going to get this garlic, which looks like it's got rust since the last time I looked out here. Um, so I'll get it all up. I've had to just get the fork and just leverage some of it up a little bit. The roots are really stiff, um, are really, really down in the, in the compost. Let's have a look how it's doing. I've just pierced one of them. I normally do that to potatoes, but um, I've pierced this one here. So I've just loosened them a bit. They are so wet. Now, I don't think these are going to store very well with being so wet. What do you think? Let me know, because I'll um, I'll keep them until I start seeing the comments on the video before I do 
anything with them. They've all split at least, the cloves. Oh, man. I'll harvest the oh, elephant garlic as well. This is a, a bramble um, from when I had the bright idea of trying to grow our own brambles and taking over everything now, just like raspberries. <clears throat> Now this is the elephant garlic, so let's see if we can do this with one hand. Oh, wow, look at the size of that. Oh, and that one's split. Brilliant. That's so good. Thrilled with that. I don't know if you remember. Let's pick this up. But the last elephant garlic that I saw, that I um, pulled off, hadn't split. It was just one big, huge clove. That I might try replanting this year, we shall see. But that looks like it's split, so I'll get them all cleaned up after I've harvested everything else. I'm so pleased about that. Now, you may or may not remember, I also planted an elephant garlic clove in a um, tub in a planter just here by the greenhouse. It's actually shot up to seed, it's thrown out a flower, so it's got a escape on it there, which I don't normally expect on the elephant garlic from what I can remember. But I'm going to harvest this one as well because all of the other garlics are out, and this now it's got the scape, it's probably not going to be doing anything. But the other two elephant garlic that I had in that bed were exactly the same as the first one I harvested. They're just like onions. They haven't split at all. So the one that you saw me harvest is the only one that I've got that's split, unless this one has. I'm going to try and do this without causing too much of a mess, because... Oh, man, this is... Hang on. Oh. Hardly elephant garlic size, is it? But it has split, I think. Whilst I decide what to do if the garlic will store with rust or not, I've brought these over, I've cleaned them off and I've brought them over. I've been using these power tools, as you can hear. He's making something for the bar um, to house a gift that he was just given. I'll show you that in another day. Anyway, so this is the size of the elephant garlic that was in the plant pot. And this is the size of the elephant garlic that was in the ground. This is the only one that's split in the ground. The one in the plant pot did split as well. So I'll do a little bit of research and try and understand what's happened there. Um, but with regards to the other garlic, I've just t washed it all off because it was soaking wet anyway, so it made no difference. And so I've washed it off because it was so muddy and I've just popped it in the barn to dry for a couple of days. Even though it's going to rain, it's still going to be quite warm. So I'm hoping that they'll dry quite nicely. It gives me a little bit of time to decide if I need to preserve them straight away or if they will store over the winter. And also to read through your comments, if anybody's got any experience of that, I would be forever grateful. Thank you very much. So what I'm going to do now, leave these here because it's sheltered. I'm going to go and finish potting up the rest of that blackcurrant jelly make the jam and then get started on the next colours. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this little sort of evening in the life, couple of evenings in the life. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and please consider subscribing, leave a comment, all that good stuff. Talk to you very soon.